a good old fashioned Georgia opening. I'm no, I'm not going to mince words here. An ass whooping. Uh, they beat Clemson by a score of 34 to three. The score was six nothing at halftime. Both offenses looked pretty stagnant in that first half, and both defenses really stepped up in that first half. But the second half was all Georgia. Clemson was not able to get anything going as they were unable to even score a touchdown in this game as Georgia ripped off 17 or what it was set 17 unanswered points in the second half. Um guy, obviously you were able to see this game. Um what what are your initial thoughts of this game um and kind of what was Clemson's downfall I guess is the question I would ask you uh, to begin here. Well, I think the thing that we all have to be praising Georgia about isn't any measure of star power, which obviously they have it, but it's the amount of depth that they have on this roster. Um, I, every touchdown was scored by uh, someone who uh, uh, in the second half or at least the fourth quarter was scored by someone who didn't start. Um, uh, there were some names that I hadn't even realized who I hadn't heard before uh who were scoring points that game uh they had players suspended players cut from the team i mean we make that joke with oh you know georgia's players are you know up to no good always and uh getting suspended but the reality is the fact that they're able to come in uh i I mean they say it's a neutral site game it was in atlanta that is not a neutral site game that's a home game don't ask me why clemson's agreeing to that Mm -hmm. but the fact that they're able to show off their depth like that, I mean, this is clearly the, the best team in the country. Yeah, I mean, obviously coming into this game, they, they're they without their starting runner back, uh, ETN, who's suspended. And all of a sudden, this freshman, Nate Frazier, 5'10", 210 pounds, leads the Bulldogs in rushing with 83 yards, 83 of their 169 yards rushing. And after the game, uh, they asked quarterback Carson Beck about him. And they're like, yeah, Frazier enrolled in May. He's been in Athens for like two or three months. And he just comes out there in this first game, gets his shot, and and takes the most of it. The depth of this Georgia team, like you mentioned, is just incredible on both sides of the ball. Um, obviously, they lost a lot from last year. Uh, Carson Beck lost some of his favorite targets from last season, one of them being Brock Bowers. And it just seems that Georgia is able to reload and find guys on both sides of the ball. Uh, they are able to have playmakers on the defensive side as well. K. Klubnick was in absolute hell all game. Um, and K. Klubnick is a guy who a lot of people had high hopes coming for in this season. Like, this is his second year as a starter. He's a junior. Um, he was a five-star kid, highly rated, coming out of high school, had some moments last season. There's a lot of people uh, expecting him to have a big showing in this game. And, you know, quite frankly, he had a really bad game. Wasn't able to really get the ball down the field, was sacked a couple times. No touchdowns, two interceptions in this game. Uh, where where did Clemson go wrong in this game in your eyes, guys? It's just Georgia's dominant showing itself. Well, I, I don't think that it's Clemson going wrong in this game. I think this is a a greater systemic failure from from Dabo. You got to use the portal. You got to use NIL. It's part of the game. You can you know hate it as much as you want. You can retire from coaching, but. If you are going to coach, you have to use the resources that you have to win. Georgia went out in the portal. They got players who they needed after Brock Bowers left, after Ladd McConkey left, right? They they come in and bring in uh, London Humphreys, who scored a who scored a touchdown uh, as at wideout, right? Mm -hmm. You you replace these players from the portal and you fundraise nil money. It's it's not some high and mighty thing not to use the resources that you have available. It's one thing if you're at, you know, some small town FCS school, you know, and you have to pass the piggy bank around to all of the the donors and say, please, you know, just any anything you have. It's, you know, passing around the basket at church or whatever. Right. It's not about being high and mighty. It's about winning the football game that's your job as the coach to win the football game and by not using the portal by not using nil you aren't helping your team you're not helping your players you're not going to win games it is a it's a systemic issue for for Dabo. you have to bring in talent right it's, especially like you know you're you're watching 
cleansing teams of the past or cleansing teams of the past, not even 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 going back further back than like the last couple seasons. Like Clemson's a team that has been able to get high level players on both sides of the ball, right? And a lot of it was through high school recruiting. Like that's that's where kind of Dabo's wheelhouse was. But to compare this, honestly, I feel like I'm I'm a pretty good person to speak on this because I'm a Michigan State basketball fan. And I have issues with my head basketball coach, Tom Izzo, doing this anti-portal thing when, unfortunately, the portal and NIL is a part of college sports. And if you are not going to adapt and adjust, the game is going to pass you by. And when I say the game is going to pass you by, that means that you're going to, in your first game of the season, not score a touchdown and lose 34 to 6. And quite frankly, it could have been worse because I thought that Georgia had some nerves in that first half. They couldn't really shake some things off. In the second half, they completely whooped Clemson's ass. So, um, look, I, I know for a fact Clemson's fan base is rabid, right? They love their football. They Honestly, they love Dabo. But, like, if this is going to go on much longer, there's going to have to be questions answered because this whole prideful stubbornness, I don't want to do this thing, this is how the game passes you up. And that's how you come out here – and you lose games like this. Now, this is one game. They do have the full season ahead of them. Georgia's Georgia, too, by the way. I guess I should bring that up. Like, honestly, getting blown out by Georgia is not the worst thing in the world, in my opinion, because Georgia's Georgia. I just expect them to put up a better fight than this. You lose to Georgia, you're like, all right, we're not there yet. We got a whole season, extended college football playoff. Everything's still in front of us. Um, but, you know, not being able to score an offensive touchdown – only managing six points in this game and giving up 34. It, it's, it's just a really bad look. And I, I know some people might have thought that Clemson was a favorite in their conference this year. I I, I think I'm, I'm not seeing it. I mean, Miami looks really, really good. Yeah, um, they walked into the swamp and beat Florida. They walked into the swamp, beat Florida, and took Florida's recruits and were doing everything and stunting. So it's going to be interesting to see throughout the rest of the year. What do you – as we wrap this up, what do you – foresee Clemson season being is it just like a they lost to Georgia they'll bounce back or do you or is this like the tailspin that maybe oh. sends Dabo out see I don't think this Clemson team is near the top 25 after watching that game uh I I think that this could be part of the tailspin I don't know if that's going to send Dabo out he might have built too much goodwill in his time at Clemson for them to to send him out you also said it could have been worse, and then you said the score was thirty-four to six, Carter. It was worse. The score <laughs> was thirty-four to three. <laughs> it, 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 it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Honestly, it, I thought it, I, like like I said, Georgia was they were. I don't know. Beck said they had some nerves in that first quarter. It kind of looked like it. Um, but once they got rolling in that second half, them boys are rolling. Uh, I I mean, can we talk about Carson Beck for a minute? I had the uh, Penn State versus WVU. Pre-cat, preview and recap as well and I I was talking about Drew Aller and how I thought he made the leap and there were some not quite to the degree of Aller but there were some Carson Beck skeptics coming into this year I think he did a good job to silence them uh in that second half I think Carson Beck is looking at a good season ahead yeah I, I agree he's looking at a good and look obviously at, when you're at a position like Carson Beck is and I mean this with like all due respect because Carson Beck's like not some just like dynamic game-changing quarterback I feel like people like doubt him and they're like oh he's not like why are we giving this guy's attention he's not a Caleb Williams he's not a this he's not a that some guys are just like so good solid I guess I don't even like saying solid but they're just you can be a good quarterback without just being this like dynamic game stopping breath taking away like type player uh, that can be good. And I think that's what Carson Beck is. He makes the right decisions. He's accurate. Uh, he's not going to make mistakes to hurt you. And he's a winner. Like, dog, he he does not. I think he's lost like one or two games in his career. Like, he's a guy who's going to go out there and win football games. He's also dating the Cavander sister. His stock is very, very up right now. Um, so, yeah, Carson Beck is, I think, going to have a really good year. And if he continues to do this and put up these stats and Georgia's really good, he might find himself with an invite to New York for the for the Heisman ceremony. You never really know if he's able to put up these type of stats and uh, be accurate as he is and not turn the ball over. I think you're going to have a hard time keeping him away from there. Or an invite to the first day of the NFL draft. 
I, there's a lot of people that that say Carson Beck might be quarterback number one, depending on who you ask, and he he might prove folks right here. But uh, you know, we will be here on Super's Media YouTube channel, previewing and recapping all Georgia football games this season. Looking like it's going to be another year where George is going to have a really good year in the SEC. I'm very excited to, you know, talk about it, preview and recap the games. For Carter Elliott, my guy, guy here, we appreciate you. and We'll catch you all next time. Football season is here. Money is out there to be had in the form of winning bets. And our friends at my book, you want to make it easy for you to do just that. Yeah, and coming into football season, you're going to have games all weekend happening everywhere. And Gregory, where is the only place that Sleepers Media places all bets? I can tell you right now, since last February, February 1st to be exact, my bookie is the only place that I have placed a sports bet. I love my bookie. They make it easy. They get you quick payouts. They have awesome promo offers. In fact, Card, they've got one right now that football fans everywhere and listeners of this show are going to want to take advantage of. Yeah, using promo code SLEEPERS, that's promo code SLEEPERS, you can take advantage of a 50% instant deposit bonus right now. That's 50% instant deposit bonus up to $1,000 over at MyBookie. Use promo code SLEEPERS and happy betting. Home dogs aren't dogs, they're wolves. I'm trying to flip that into like sport, like home sports books aren't books, they're novels. We'll work on it. That didn't work. Go my bookie promo code sleepers.